Across the history of the Splatoon franchise, only one weapon has been removed from the game. The Dual Squelter. But what if the devs tried this again in Splatoon 4? Splatoon 4 will definitely be on the Nintendo Switch 2. Common sense assumptions we've come to expect could be thrown out. So why can't this include whole main weapons to change the identity of Splatoon 4? Today, I want to go through reasons why removing weapons from Splatoon is and isn't a good idea. I'll be covering my thoughts in detail, so strap in! But how do you decide what weapons to remove? I ran a few polls for fun. This one is based on the weapons that cause a lot of misery in solo queue. Would it surprise you that the Clash Blaster was targeted by more than half the people who filled out this poll? But then I thought about it more. Deaths from Clash Blasters tend to be pretty slow. Embarrassing. Miserable. And you're probably feeding to it because you missed too many shots or you didn't react fast enough. Without a direct, the Clash needs four slow, indirect shots to finish you off. Shooter gameplay is just more natural in Splatoon. Whether you're losing a 1v1 or getting shot across the map, you're like, okay, yeah, squeezer. It invokes a different feeling. Others have been danced around by a sploosh enough times to never want to see that creature Again, you've had a different set of experiences than anyone else watching this video. This makes every single one of us a bit biased. Deciding what you want to take out might depend heavily on what you play the most. Imagine it. Blah Blobber, Hammerhead Bridge, Turf War enjoyers surely despise getting pelted with Blah Blobber blobs more than the average guy. But then... What's the Blah Blobber versus Blah Blobber matchup like? Do they want to see the Blob removed from the game in a if I can't have it, nobody can way? <laughs> what about this poll? A bunch of long range splatlings. And then boom, Hydra splatling. Color me surprise. I guess I never imagined 3,500 people having such a vendetta against the Hydra splatling. I was super sure that Heavy Edit was the one that was gonna get the boot here. As someone who's played since Splatoon 1, I remember the days where you did not mess with the Hydra. I mean, come on. You're not messing with a Hydra on Hammerhead Bridge, e even in Splatoon 3, okay? It's like how Splatoon 1 players fear Chargers, especially E-leaders, more than the average guy. It's like encoded in our DNA or something, I think. Honestly, the responses were really interesting on this one, ranging from people who didn't really understand the identity of the ballpoint or the heavy edit, people who thought the Hydra was too slow, and great conversations like this one. <laughs> what about removing just one weapon from every single class? One shooter? One bucket? One splatling? One charger? You name it. Post-release, we were given at least one brand new weapon for every single weapon class. The next game could start with one plucked out from each class instead. No more, er, um, uh, explosher. It's just a long-range sloshing machine that explodes, right? No more bamboozler. It's just like Snipe Raider, but not, right? No more Splattershot Pro. It's been fighting for its life alongside the 96 gal for, like, eons. Right? Stop. Stop. Stop these comparisons. No. Stop. And then you have Sam and Run. What if I want to see Squeezer get drop kicked out of this game so I never have to tap fire spam a Drizzler slowly to zero HP again in my life? Hmm? 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 Mr. Grizz, why do you keep putting it in rotation so much? Look, it's here right now, Mr. Grizz. Sam and Run rely solely on main weapons after all. So removing some main weapons could let others have a better chance at showing up, especially in randomized rotations. But this would only last until more weapons get added in to fill the slots left behind with their removal. Remember at the start of this video, I mentioned the dual squelcher? Technically, it got a second life from the Splattershot Nova, a middle-range weapon with pretty good paint and kits to be passive, but really persistent. But just like the Dual Squelcher, it's weak. And you know, the fact that the Dual Squelcher was a four shot and the Nova isn't, why is it a five shot again? But you know what? The Dual Squelcher was my favorite weapon in Splatoon 1. She was my everything. I, I loved chucking splat bombs and hiding around corners. I loved plopping down beacons in silly spots and then spamming whale. I didn't care that the thing struggled in, like, every matchup imaginable. It was mine! And this is something that Splatoon as a franchise has done really, really, really well. 
there is no weapon in the game that really can be substituted for another. Splatoon 3 may have its balancing issues, but there is no weapon in this game that suffers anywhere near a win rate of zero. Video game devs dream of making games where people can play their favorites, like, without fear. Any weapon that gets removed will lead to sad players. That big swig roller play six months ago might have gotten so deep into Jimothy's brain that he never wants to play anything again. No big swig in Splatoon 4? No buy. Would you want to do that to Jimothy? Would you? But how few is too few? Are there weapons where it's worth taking the risk under the hope these individuals will find alternative mains to lighten the load of weapon mains in Splatoon 4? We know for a fact the Splatoon development team does collect gameplay data to help with the balance patches. Usage data, if they have it, would let them see which weapons aren't getting as much love as the rest. So if you have a niche favorite, maybe now is the time to return to it. You know, uh, just in case. Let's say Splatoon 4 wants a different identity. And part of that identity is changing weapons around. Is it better to change the identity of current weapons as opposed to replacing them flat out? The only one we have right now in the game is the Nova versus Dual Squelter situation. I did one more poll with my audience. This one focused on two strong weapons, the 52 and the Snipe Rider, and two considerably weaker weapons, the Goo Tuber and the Undercover Barella. You wanna know the real case that most people have for the Goo Tuber? Look at this. You, you can hear me mashing right now on my controller, right? The Goo Tuber squid bags faster than any other weapon in the game. People want to keep it. <laughs> Short and sweet. Besides, the people banded together to decisively explode the 52 gal to never be seen again if possible. Honestly, which feels more natural to you? Turning the 52 gal into a three shot and keeping it in Splatoon 4? Altered forever to prevent it from annihilating players in 13 frames like it does right now? Or adding a replacement shooter that does, let's say, 40 damage and has all the stats of the 52 gal otherwise? People to this very day mourn the damage nerf done to the Splatbrella back during Splatoon 2. In fact, seeing it increase during Splatoon 3 was one of the community's biggest hopes. But that hasn't happened yet, at least the time of making this video. The Brella in a good, low lag environment, which is much more achievable in Splatoon 3 now due to the tick rate improvements added in the summer of 2024, can absolutely shut down most shooter players for enough time for a teammate to take them out. Like seriously, give it a damage buff and it'll see more use instantaneously. When Splatoon 2 first dropped, the tri slosher was nearly the same as it was in Splatoon 1, minus being a bit slower. Oh yeah, and the part where its range was absolutely not correct. Every weapon had its range scaled down from Splatoon 1, but the tri slosher escaped this correction. I can almost imitate the feeling by firing a slosh up here on the Rainmaker pedestal, getting on the floor and doing the same thing. One has a, a bit a bit more reach, and this is underselling how bad it was. It was winning fights it never should have against stuff like splatter shots and gals. Both of these weapons kept their identity but were drastically altered and perceived in a different way as a result. Let's take a look at that poll again. The undercover Brella, by far, received the least votes. Again, players would rather take out weapons that are problematic then weapons that are far too weak. Again, players would rather take out weapons that are problematic instead of going for the weapons that are considered weak. Video game balancing patches, including Splatoon 3s, will usually choose to weaken a powerful weapon over strengthening a weak one. This can create a power vacuum where other weapons can step up to the plate and take that now open spot in the meta, in ranked games, in your friendly private battle matches, you name it. People are naturally going to move in. But is the game better, stronger as a result of that? Does the maximum potential that shines through these replacement weapons let players feel as powerful as before? In higher level competitive Splatoon, many of you know the Snipe Rider is the true main backline that you see. But many tournaments have started to see a rising number of heavy edit Splatling players after the recent nerfs. Whether you as a player like this or not might depend on how you feel about Splatlings. Team play in solo is gonna feel a lot different with a Splatling versus a Charger. Powerful straight line shots and barrage fire provide different benefits for the team. At least they both have cooler, haha. <laughs> 
Food for thought, if you remove too many powerful weapons, at what point do weapons have to be strengthened, or replacements need to be added to make the game feel the same? If Splatoon 4 wants to alter its identity, having all the main weapons feel a little weaker is a path they could take, but most players won't like that. Or even scarier thought, removing a weapon might remove a role completely from the game. Think about Squiffer and Reflux. Probably since the time the Reflux got added to the game, people have been comparing them with things like, oh look, it jump in the air and you get the charge fast thing, which I, I know wasn't added in until later for the Reflux, but it's been in for a while now. But if you remove one, does the other naturally become the go-to for players of the other? No, not at all. I know some of you probably <laughs> shudder at the thought. I'm top 100 team grub forever with Squiffer after all, thank you very much! In the end, I think I'd mourn the loss of some weapons in Splatoon 4, but I think it's the way to go. Who knows what they'd take out, but maybe, together, we'll be able to understand a little bit more if it happens. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe and feel free to keep talking about this in the comments. Thank you for listening, and hold your weapons a little closer to you tonight when you go to sleep in your apartment in Flounder Heights. You never know if your weapon might be next. Dun dun dun! <laughs>